so I think that's why they should be so we got the minutes, we got tax roll corrections. Is that how we do it? meeting, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Hi, Carolyn. Hello. Um, 
we get a call last Friday from Todd saying that Julie is now, with things going on with the hospital, is very overwhelmed with what's going on. Um, they did not want her to do the back room anymore, from what I understand. Um, and he made the motion somewhat to write him off um, without my knowledge. I had no idea that he was going to ask you guys to do that. If he would have contacted me, I would have told him that there are patients in there from 2009 that are self-pay accounts that are paying right now. There are patients in there that have got self-pay accounts that have signed contracts with us saying that they will pay up to five years. Um, I called ARSI, and ARSI would like to step in and help us um, take over the 2009-2010 accounts, the older ones. We can go through them, we've got the signatures on them, we can see what we can get for collections before we even present writing them off. So I wanted to help you guys for that. Well, there's some of those accounts that I believe, I mean, I know one in particular that still hasn't been notified that he owes the money. And, and, and I don't remember. Oh. Well, it's been two years ago. Over two years ago, almost three. And I think we, if you have time to go through those, I think it would be very beneficial to even send a letter explaining the situation of you know, they were turned over to your insurance, and for whatever reason, this is now what you owe. Um, I know it's going to take a lot of time because I, when, when I met with Julie and Todd, I know that she said that would take an immense amount of time to do that. So I, I think if, it's worth a try before we go to the collections with them. Because I know several accounts, specific accounts, that would pay if. If, if they knew or if they received a letter that they still owe whatever amount. Um, and I know I realize it's going to take a lot of time. So. Well, I just want to get out there that yeah. I'm not looking to try to write anything off unless we meant everything possible to collect on the yeah, first. I, I agree with that. So, um, okay. we did. Were, they, they were trying to write it off or thought we ought to write it off. Well, I think they're just exhausted by the time it's going to, yeah. to, to do to get to the point that they're at. That's what Todd told to. me he said to you guys. So that's what he, when, he, when he called me Thursday or Friday and told me that. I said, what? I have no idea. Let me go through these and see. Um, and so, like I said, that's why I had said that. They're going to come today. Um, we talked about the contract that we have with them because they're going to be, they were doing the research and the statements and everything. Julie will be going on attorney leave in February. <laughs> And so they'll be that void. It wasn't a big mess until one of their people left, Suzanne and left or some whoever, um, threw a huge workload onto Julie. And they're afraid that, or I, I would foresee that if we had them still doing our statements, I don't know who they would give it to when she's gone. So I thought in December, they're going to do our statements through the 15th. And then I would take over the January. And we'll just move on from there. And I will do it from here on out. Every month, make sure they're out on the feelings. Yes. The new ones? Yes, the new ones. So even when she returns from returning leave, you're still going to, so basically we're done with the hospital doing our billing. Yes. Unless you guys would see it or if you'd like to keep it, that's fine. But to go back and forth, back and forth, I think I could just take it over in January and be done. You know. So you're okay with that? Yes. Okay. So the backlog and everything's been cleared up and all the research has been done. So. The, um, yes, we're oh, also working on the research part too. I mean, that's not, research is always going to be there, unfortunately. But um, we still, we've been working on it and I'm still getting everything cleared up. I've got one, a couple stacks that Julie gave me that I'm still working on, but we'll get to it. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. And like I said, they'll be here at 9.30 to present our financial Hey, Carolyn. Well, really, it's really Joe and Back. The moderate income housing program grant um, needs a, a basically an acceptance of the, the grant award. Oh. The contract signed and submitted, so I'm here to answer questions, but as a contract, I really think it's Joe's floor. <laughs> well, essentially, Cheryl advised me this is state money that's available. And obviously, there's strings attached, which are pretty much summarized in the you know packet of information that we was sent to Nita. And uh, 
to accept it obviously requires a motion and a vote. Uh, I did not see anything in there that I saw as being particularly disturbing, like minority set-asides. has been extended you know we were we were selected mm -hmm. but this is basically the the grant agreement this is and the grant comes to the county it's collaborative effort with economic development but the county is actually the grant recipient so this is the grant agreement saying yes we we want to participate and we understand these are the guidelines and we're you know entering into a grant agreement so it doesn't mean we've received it yet you will get the money as the project is carried out. So actually, it's a reimbursement, and they do allow progress. Oh, I mean, I mean, we've been awarded the grant. Been no, awarded the grant, but when you actually get the extended. funds, we have to first of all, we have to accept. accept it, and then you have to begin the process of construction. And as those bills are incurred, then the reimbursement will follow. You don't get the cash up front. In other words, some type of auditor is going to come out here and actually look to see if ground is broken, if there's a foundation before funds are released. That's, my understanding, I've right. been told that they'll want to come out here once this is signed. They'll want to come out here with a, a, a pre-construction meeting and, um, I guess, clarify expectations. I want to just see the site where we're going to do it and so forth. Um, I'm told that that the, the reimbursement has been in the past fairly prompt in terms of government stuff. I mean, you'll hopefully get it within two or three weeks of submitting the, the billing. And again, they told me that, that they will allow progress billing on this. So in other words, you don't have to complete the entire project and get the entire lump sum at the end that you can you can do it in increments as the project is going. But you definitely want those incremental payments. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So um, to get the reimbursement, okay. Of course, I'm thinking about the bookkeeping part. So, um, what what's the county's responsibility? I mean, do you maintain copies and submit it to them for reimbursement? For on behalf of the county, will you do that, or like as bills come in, because you'll be bringing us the bills, I assume. Um, the bills will really come to the county. I'll try to be as involved to keep this, you know, going smoothly and, and you know, minimize the workload, but it is the county that will get billed for the work from the contractors, and the county will be the one that submits the reimbursement to the state of Kansas. Who's the administrator of the grant? Yes, I. Am. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that from the state of Kansas. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and maybe this is a conversation for another day. I, I may be jumping. When they come down for the pre construction meeting, we're going and Amber's coming down. Gotcha. I've already. Okay. Yeah, I just hadn't right. mentioned no, that. We're, we're, we're going to be involved in that pre-construction thing along with Amber, so we know how what we set things up. Yes. Okay. So it, it, we necessity should has to come out of, if we go through the route of necessity, it comes out of our general fund. Well, yeah. I mean, as a Initial. capital outlay fund, mm -hmm. I mean, I, we've got to have $168,000 before we start. Right, and that's where I was kind of interested in these progress billings. We can do it in thirty thousand dollars at a time, or whatever, and, and minimize and the impact of cash flow. 
who's going to monitor to make sure that we don't go over the 168,000? Well, 168,000 is the, the extent of the grant. So um, right, but a, after that, we'll probably have to look at economic development's operating funding to make up a gap if they're if we're not able to because I know 168,000 is pretty aggressively low for full completion of the building we do have some money in our operating budget allowed for this so that gap will have to come from economic development the county will just be a pass well I know but I don't want to be but, stunned with, with well, another no, no. 170,000 dollars on top of the 168 no, we've we won't paid out because we're and then say oh no, that falls on economic development, just, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it'll anything just be, over that grant. Yeah. To, to complete. Right. To complete the right. house, it'll be a duplex. There, right. There's going to be a contract, as I understand it, between uh, economic development and a builder. You know, whoever the builder will be. Well, the contract's really probably going to be with um, the the county. Okay, the county's going to contract with the builder to build a whatever, a duplex. Oh, organized through. Through the economic development. <laughs> <Well, laughs> <you know. laughs> right, I, I mean, are you, is that what your plan is all for? Yeah. Now, are there any plans, uh, blueprints for what we're going to be building? We have, yes, a blueprint blueprint that needed modification and we have a draftsman and greatsman right now that is working on that modification. So do you know about what the project will cost total or not? Well, again, we have estimates at this point, not bids. And my estimates have ranged from that 170-ish to 210. And if we're at the 210 level, um, we have $60,000 we can attribute to this. We've accumulated from carrying over from year to year and so forth. So, because we're going to have to settle upon a, a design or blueprint and then have people, you know, they make some formal bids. I right. think right. the fancy term for that is a legend. Right, right. And that's why we're having that modification done to that plan because we need to have that a formal. We bought we bought a plan basically that was. Kind of off the shelf, saw, kind of what was that the plan that we saw? Yes, um, but it needs modifications, including a basement layout. And um, so, we've contracted with the draftsman and great to, to do that. What's your time frame? I mean, what's as soon as we can get it going? <laughs> and this will be built, this will be done within 12 months. Yeah, I think once we get going, it should, we should be able to get a house built in 12 months. But, where is it? Um, we have lots in Maxville and in Stafford, so um, it could be either one. You have not picked yet? Well, we've got funding for another one, too, so I don't know. It kind of ends oh. up being, I don't know, because <laughs> we've got 214000 coming from the uh, tax credit grant award that we have. So basically we're gonna build build one in each town. So the second one will be similar paperwork exactly. as to this? Oh well the second one the county doesn't have to have any involvement in at all because it's a grant award directly to Stafford County Economic Development. So we'll go through the same process, build the same house, but you just won't have to be the intermediary. <laughs> <laughs> so right now we'd just be voting to accept this agreement. Well, the agreement's part of it's all right, I think. Well, what, 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 what you have to, have to remember is, you know, we're going to be hiring somebody to uh, Build us a, I'll call it a duplex, okay? Because I haven't seen specs. And, you know, once we contract with the builder, we're going to be obligated to pay the sucker if somebody builds with it. And the one thing, you know, you have to remember, and they, they have this in here, uh, 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 
grantee, that's us, understands that MIHR, if that's a state agency, is funded in whole or in part by the state of Kansas funds provided through the bill. In the unlikely event the state funds supporting this agreement become unavailable, are reduced, or are rescinded, uh, KHRC may terminate or amend this agreement without penalty and will not be obligated to pay the grantee from any other sources. So in other words, we're, we're a bit out on a limb. Okay? Now, the reason I'm reading that to you is, I don't know if you uh, follow events at Topeka closely or not, but they, they had a really interesting revenue short, shortfall for the first, first quarter of this current fiscal year. State of Kansas is on a July 1 to July 1 fiscal year. And the, what's kind of interesting is you have people arguing whether it's 172 million shortage or 82 million shortage. And I'm sitting there going, hmm, that does not bode well that they can't put their finger on it. So I, I just throw that out for what it's worth. You know, we're going to be the, uh, the ones who basically are going to be, you know, obliged to cut a check. They left a an escape clause in there, so to speak. Now, I'd like to think that the you know, one hundred sixty-eight thousand dollars is kind of you know sitting there in a fund, de dedicated <laughs> fund. Uh, but uh, quite honestly, you know that I don't know. I mean, I mean, the first time I've seen this program, I've seen federal ones where you have all these bells and whistles that are almost impossible to comply with. I like particularly the minority set aside. probably visited yeah. with people on Topeka about it. Well, so, yeah, the way I would look months. at it, this was appropriated in 2013. It's probably already been appropriated to KHRC. I would guess that any shortfall is going to come with future obligations before contractual obligation that's, I mean, that don't contracts, existing contracts have higher, I mean, whatever, priorities, what it boils down to over income, you know, future obligations. You're the attorney. I would say well, that the I mean, though the contracts take precedence. Well, they're, they're, that's really they, they, the, they the basically concern. have a nice escape clause for themselves. As a practical matter, the sooner you know construction starts and moves along, and the sooner you start you yes. know submitting bills to the state for your reimbursement, the better. If you try and St start this nine, nine months from now, that'd be maybe a whole different scenario. I'm sure there's money there now, but I'm saying for the passage of time, I, I can see the state of Kansas has some real financial problems, uh, but that's just, you know, former, you know, whatever economics major from Northwestern University speaking. It looked like on those grants that you had a number of those grants that were submitted and they all got rolled back some. Like they knew they had a certain amount of money to give out. Well, yeah, yes, KHRC had $2 million, two million mm -hmm. was appropriated statewide for this program in 2013. When KHRC has their, their uh, you know, the amount that they know they can work with, then they, on a competitive basis, choose you know. people that are, you know, are two projects that are going to receive that $2 million. So they were spreading, you know, that finite $2 million amount statewide. We applied for the, we didn't apply for the maximum amount. The maximum amount under the statute was 400000 yes. The application that we submitted was three hundred and twenty-eight thousand. I forget, a little over 300000 They scaled it back to one sixty-eight. Made eight awards or whatever it was statewide. What about the, the environmental report? Do we have to do that? Because it says a copy of the envir environmental report, and it seems to me that it will require the services of a civil engineer. Um, it. This is environmental site evaluation. They want to know previous ownership and uses. 
including names of owners, tenants, and occupants, um, site investigation list. After looking at each, the reviewer observed bad housekeeping, bad housekeeping on the grounds, bad housekeeping inside the building, above ground storage tanks. It's not an engineered environmental assessment. It's mm -hmm. who would do that? Well, at least we're not going to do a phase one environmental report because we're essentially going to be the lender. We can wait for that. <laughs> That's a uh, NEPA or whatever. We had to do that for the Ellsworth Hospital. Yeah. That's expensive. We're going to be, but we're you know we sucked the bank in here. And the bank wanted something like that. Sure, but we're going to be the, the, the lender essentially. You know, we'll be putting the money out and getting the reimbursement. We can waive that, so we just use the enclosed form. Mm -hmm. Who signs off on the enclosed form? You have the cover form? sheet that yeah. came with this. Mm -hmm. yeah. This was the package. There was a cover sheet. Yeah. Okay. I think. Uh, yeah, that's it. It's not here. Here's the here's the original. I just shot copies of that for the commissioners. I didn't see an enclosed form up on asking. Otherwise, the enclosed, enclosed form can be used to enclose that form. <laughs> So you have one that says the, the uh, environmental report. Yeah, here. That's it. But who signs off on it? This evaluation was completed by, and I certify the best of my knowledge and ability. This is a true and accurate statement. <laughs> well, well, what, their what their intent is pretty obvious. They don't want some, some eager beavers going out and building on an empty lot where there's underground storage tanks. Okay. Yeah, and I guess service station. Trust me, I foreclosed on a former gas station. To this day, I tell people the lots are in the middle of a block in a residential neighborhood. Who the hell put a gas station? Well, yeah. this has the same thing, underground storage. <coughs> these proposals have been, these deadlines have been met for proposals on the application process. Well, the application was before, before. Yeah, that, yeah. But the proposals under the RFP. It was submitted. Okay. Is that the June 5th proposal dated the June 5th? Yes. That was when they announced the oh, availability, and then I think it was August 31st. The letter to Nina just came out October 9th, so she probably got it. Yeah. I think it was in August, September 6th, that's what it was. September 6th was when the application was due. And I think it's a great idea. I just, there's some gray areas that make me really nervous. <laughs> <clears throat> well, on number two, it says commitment to a pre construction conference with KHRC staff, the applicant, developer, and contractor. So I think that then at that point in time, I would say, eh, go and open. You know, there's several things that have, even if we approve this, there's several things that have to happen before it's a done deal. And if your contractor gets in there and says, hey, I can't build it for that, yeah, I might have to reload. Yeah, before you have the conference, you're going to have to have a, a letting, you know, so it's, 
Right. So you can have a whole committee of would-be contractors there. And of course, I'm always a big fan of when you're taking or considering bids, lowest and A and D best, because I, as I drive down here on Dartmouth Road, there's a house under construction. And all I know about the house is that the builder who's got his sign up in front of it will never get any of my business. You have unofficially visited with some contractors, haven't you? Unofficially, yeah. yeah. Um, kind of trying to survey whether people are interested in getting the request for bids. Because you know you get some you know you have a timeline here you know you got uh, big you know, obviously begins after January 1 2014 completed no later than December 31 2014. Uh, you know. Are you going to hire a general contractor to oversee the whole project or? That would be ideal. We want to keep as much local as we can, and I'm not certain exactly what. Contractor and response are going to be in the county, but yes, I think that's no. the, the, the best practice. The, the, Even if we had to have a general contractor oversee other subcontractors who are local contractors. The, the, uh, the one building that was done by Great Bend for, I think, of Anschutz or something, David Salem's house up north on Dartmouth Road, that, that went up bang, bang, bang. And there's another house, like I say, also on Dartmouth Road that's, you know, opposite. every now and then there's signs of life. But, <laughs> uh, it's going to take a minute to do it. It's going to take a while. You know that. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know who builds houses here in Stafford. What, we name people right now? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you know, you're, 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 you're at all. Well, we've assembled a list, I didn't bring it yeah. here today, of contractors that we know in the county. Most of them are not ones that I would qualify or put the category of general contractors, although some of them probably can perform that if. if. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's several. So basically, if we agree to this today, we're just moving one step closer to this. So you're getting the bids and there's still this, a lot to go on. Pre construction audit and meeting, I guess, mm -hmm. what maybe. But prior to this pre construction we we'll have to have a contractor. So that's what I'm so saying. You might want to that. identify potential builders and start sending a little packet saying, here's what we might be building. Are you interested? When you did the annex, did you did you choose a general contractor before you did bids? Or how did you? The general contractor is the architect. Okay. And in turn, we, the bids were left. We've compared a couple of options. The ones that we ended up using is Terry's residential design and great end to do that. Design. And I don't think he's a general contractor. He's used the term superintendent before. I, mean, I don't know if I'm going to be willing to do that. I don't know if that would be the best way to then survey the options for other contractors or to choose a general contractor and then proceed in that way. Well, you can have a project manager, you can have construction supervisor, it's just someone that's making certain that you're getting what was in the bid. For example, you know, the bid is a 20, it's a 200 amp breaker and somebody slips in 100 or schedule whatever PDC and Something else is done. So you have to have a watch out. So careless. <laughs> so I guess the issue is, you know, 
go ahead and apply for this, and then you go ahead and send out letters to to builders and say, okay, here's the square footage, this is what we want, what is it going to cost? And they'll remodel and be very stupid and they invite you not all the contractors, I think they had one show. Yeah, we had they two. also they, they had two. 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 They, they hired a, a yeah. Sutherland yeah. As, yeah. as a general. Yeah. He he's one that had given them some estimates, gave estimates of what the cost would be as we filled out the grant applications. He told me that if he didn't plan to to carry out the work, he would work with locals to subcontract. But if the the bids for those that local work were so out of line that he was capable within his company of doing the work that would be in line with what that estimate was. Yeah, yeah. and he so, prefers to use the local people because it actually costs him more to bring his crews in, put them in hotels. Yeah. 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 He prefers to use the local people. So, so this will be a lot more cut and dry than that will be though when you start to discuss yeah. yeah, but still that idea of having that type of general contractor would be a useful thing. Yeah. Still allow us the, to first of all, we're going to be built into a particular plan. We're not going to be drawing up plans for a house. We're going to be pulling out something out of a plan book and saying, yes, we'll fit in this there making sure that the electrician's there on the day that he needs to be there so that the carpenters aren't waiting for the electrician to finish what he's supposed to be doing. Well, you, All that kind of stuff. Yeah. You can't be changing your mind once you get started. Hey, let's add on this. Make I move that we go ahead and proceed with the agreement with uh, Kansas Income Housing Program. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Sign this agreement with the Kansas Moderate Income Housing Program. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say sign. Motion carried. And I guess we got two originals here. I guess we signed both, keep one for us, and send one on to this Kansas Housing Resource Corporation. Somebody to explain to me who's buying all those 
$300,000 houses are putting up in the southeast quadrant of the city of Swan. I mean, I'm one of these guys who, I see building going and I'll stop and I'll go off and I'll measure it and I'll calculate, you know, how many square feet do we have here because I have friends who are contractors and I know what they're charging a square foot for reconstruction. $150 square foot. And, you know, kind of thinking there now, would I be able to afford this? I mean, I'm serious. I mean, it's, it's just a mystery to me. The town of Salina, I mean, I kid you not, uh, right. next time you're there, you know, drive uh, on Schilling Road, go east. And, you know, you go, wow, all this construction. That's the thing that bothers me is who's buying these houses? How are they buying them? <coughs> I hope they fill them high enough. You know, that used to be floodplain yeah, for a year. So yeah. Nobody built on there. All of a sudden, they're building way the heck south and east on with this traditional floodplain. I mean, uh, I lived in Salina for about nine months uh, you know, tr trying to, you know, I was shopping for a house in Ellsworth. Uh, I know who's building the new houses in Ellsworth, you know, but. Uh, you know, just like maybe four or five new McMansions. But the salon is a whole bunch of them. I hope they check out whether they have stay for flood insurance. <laughs> they won't be able to afford it if they decide to do that. Uh, possible. Okay, we'll have to wait. Okay. I don't think there's anything else that I need to know that's addressed. We'll discuss that. Okay, we'll see. Or maybe we'll do the tax. So, what's your tax? We approved the tax roll correction. It's going to be the same way, except, except the tax roll correction is on there. Say aye. Aye. All right. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, so there's two here. Should I just give you one because you're copying? And then I'll send you the other Are you going to mail it in? I'll mail it in. Okay, that's fine. Since I'm the case, I'm just going to go That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, like I say, start trying to entice those <coughs> potential. Is that yours? That's mine. Whatever mine. Okay. You can cheat the other copy. Fine. I'll find it. All right. Thank you. I have something. Oh, the house. The house yeah. Real, real quick um, on that oil and gas completion thing. I got a bill from that law firm. As far as I'm concerned, we'll just yeah. pay it out of my budget. We, what was your bill for? Well, it was, it was $436. Yeah, I yeah, already paid. Oh, you already paid? Great. I paid it out of county general. Okay, that's fine. I figured. Do you think that would be the only fees we have associated with that? Well, pretty much so. It's a question of law. It's not like you're going to have a trial with what kind of It's basically the judge, read the statutes, and please tell the state they can't do this. Oh. Well, I, I saw they CC'd you on. I didn't even think to tell you that I had taken care of that. Oh, really? Oh, really? Some people do something that's okay. No, no, no. I'm just trying to figure out now. You don't mind, Shane? slide over this. Yeah, that's no problem. You need to line of sight. You used your sight.
46 with the average length of stay. We have three skilled for young mids, which is 33 length of stays, and 120 skilled intermediate length of stays. PT was up from prior months to 46 patients with 200 treatments and evals. Occupational therapy, we have four patients and eight treatments and evals. No speech therapy. Total radiology was up to 82. CT exams were up to 22. <coughs> Ultrasounds were up to 6. EKGs were double, double chromosomes to 25. Mammos were down a little to 13. Bone densities we had 2. MRIs were 4. Total lab testing was up to 2,863 tests. ER, we had 72 patients, three of them being admitted and 11 of them being transferred. Home health was steady with 17 patients and we had 154 visits. Outpatient other was up to 250 and clinic specialties were 23. that so they that part out.
because we lost a lab employee, so having a contract labor person cover a weekend call shift. What's under your minor equipment? Minor equipment was there was a $3,500 contract renewal for voice products, which is how the doctors dictate their charts. And then our other operating expenses were up some for G Martin Services.
Are you thinking of renewing your signed contracts? Yes, I went through 2009, just last night, and I've got a, there's probably 52 accounts out there, and I think I've got 35, 35 of them. And the other ones, um, some are deceased patients that we have to write off anyway. And the other ones just, it's up to the techs when they run the calls to get the signatures that allow us to build the insurance, and that's also the contract that extends it to five years. Sometimes um, they're too big of an emergency, they don't get them, and I have to send them out, and they don't get them back. So that's why we wouldn't have the signatures on file, but we do have them on the other. They would have all been written yeah. off before now if they weren't, didn't, didn't have a contract, right? So it's a real <laughs> Yes. So I'll go through there and I'll decipher those. I've got them all printed out right now, and I've got all the signature pages, and I'll go through them this week, and then bring back to you guys next week for 2009 to say this is what I've got. We can turn these, and this is what's left out there, and this is what. So. Did you guys visit about? I did tell them about okay. the hospital, but if you guys wanted to. We talked about it last week as well, and. and uh, Again, I, I thank all three of you guys for coming over and visiting with us because uh, you know it's important that we keep some communication open and we don't want to get any kind of mess we got in last time. So I wish we had started this about six months ago to just speed things up a little bit. But uh, if you guys have talked already, and, and, and is there any questions about me? Do we all understand why? We're having to get this back. I mean, we had a bill and a half when we started it, and we have half a bill. So, <laughs> half a bill that's learning. So, that's no reason. Well, I think Misty <clears throat> alluded to the fact that, that she, can, she can handle it now. We have all this backlog taken care of, so. I think from their side, 2009, 2010, cleaning that up with them, with the signed contracts, getting them out, deciphering what's what, then the 11, 12, and 13 are really manageable. So, like you said, it'll take a little bit of time, but we'll get there. And you did say the future billings you, you wanted to take care of. Then yeah. Did, so. From January 1, you know, the January 15th billing, I'll take over and do those. Because I told them Julie's going on maternity leave in February, then you'd have to decide who's going to do what. And, <laughs> and we don't want any more bumps in the road, so let's just do it this way. It's a little and, scary. Yeah. Uh, that, that brings me to the next thing. Um, our cash flow so slowed down considerably um, and explained the uh, process of having the energy market come out and do some training continually. And through that process, we discovered our charge master is less than adequate. It is the, it's kind of hard to describe, it's, I'm going to say a system for how we decide what we're charging and all that. Uh, it needs to be updated. That's the way the cost comes in. Um, and it's, it's so antiquated that the way Amy described it to me um, was, you know, she, she's got enough experience. She can say, I'll look at the, the stuff and say, okay, she knows this, this, and this needs to be changed so that everything goes and everything drops like it's supposed to. The charge master isn't doing that. It's causing Julie to send stuff, get it sent back, have to correct it, and it's really slowing down our process, which has slowed down cash flow. So, um, and we were doing some research, and um, it looks like that we can ask for a, a cash advance on the taxes we have coming. This is the way we read the statute. Um, <laughs> Which statute are you referring? Nothing that I I know of. I mean, I only distribute taxes that have been collected. Right. I I don't know. I have to refer to Joe.
Could we, could, but since the county has a tax and uh, a tax and authority, couldn't the county decide if they, if, because they, we are under their auspices, couldn't they then decide to um, grant uh, an, an advance because they are a tax and authority? We've got to have a certain amount of money here before we can do that. Yeah, but I'm just asking if that. The, the, the county allocates dollar sign X for the mm -hmm. hospital. Um, budget. Uh, obviously the commissioners, uh, uh, you know, they got extra cash money around. Uh, they can strip and send some to the hospital, but I think it's going to be a situation. I haven't looked at, I haven't said that at least I'm looking at the books, but are you going to be robbing Peter to pay Paul? I mean, you're going to shut down like Rudin Bridge to divert the money to the hospital? Does the county have any funds set aside for rainy day? No. So they spend everything that they take in? We're a conduit is the best yeah. way to describe a county government. Everybody uh, submits a budget, a budget set, and you only levy enough taxes to meet mm -hmm. that figure. You don't, you know, if you, you levy to meet 100% of the budget, not 110 or 120% of the budget. But I thought I read someplace, and maybe I'm wrong, I mean, I'd be wrong. Um, but uh, I thought that there was some place that were, there was money set aside uh, in an account, um, but, and I can't, I can't, I don't have my information in front of me. But, uh, but it was like, I don't know. You mean know, like a rainy day? Of well, whether it was CDs or whether it was, um, <coughs> don't you have some CDs set aside? or? No, so, because they're not a specific fund. Right. The CDs. Right. What are they used for? Uh, what are the CDs used for? It, it's just like the balance that's in our checking account. I mean, it's it's. Um, but they're set aside for a reason. They're set aside for something. <laughs> they're just there to, to earn the the county money. That's the in, intention for. So there probably is some money out there. Just the, county, the county gets two big cash flows a year, December and May. May. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, and, and I, I, I don't. I don't know that you would consider it robbing Peter to pay Paul because if if there was some cash that you could spare us, then when it, you know when we're due for that payment. We would certainly pay that back. I mean, I, I guess we're hoping for a way to do it. Um, the, the other thing is, I you know, it's it's a 
probably the road. I mean, it's an unfortunate thing we're building with, but she did, and, and here we are. And um, we don't want to, I don't want to let it get to the point it was two years ago. And so we need to have some discussion. It just doesn't take very long to get. So did the government shut down and play a role in this as well, Todd? There was three weeks that we did not get anything until the end, end of that three-week period. And they assured us that that, that wouldn't happen and, and CMS was functioning and we didn't get any, any money until the end of that three-week period. So, um, yes, it did play a role in that. And I, I, I feel like we've been very conscious of our uh, expenditures. You know, we, we haven't. We've had several employees that have, have left for whatever reason. Um, we haven't replaced. We have replaced one. And I don't know how many total we've had. I don't mean we're sixty some employees right before I started, and we're at thirty seven right now. Um, and we have six that are PRM, which is as needed, and five that are part time. And, and that's what I remember from the last time I checked. It varies a little bit on the part time and PRM from time to time. Um, but I just feel like we've done what we said we'd do, and, and there's more to do. We just, it's not quite there yet. Um, we're meeting with GPHA second week in December and, and they uh, offer several different kinds of management financial services to hospitals and we use them for part of our uh, system anyway. Uh, we're familiar with the hospital and, and uh, it was suggested by a colleague of mine that uh, they come out and, and see if they can you know, show us some further savings or you know, make some changes in the office. One of the things I think Todd mentioned too about the fact that we're looking at this new billing system and the new billing system comes through and is effective for what we need, we think it's going to be and more effect, more efficiently collecting the monies, we, we probably won't get them to a situation that we've got to pay for. And, and so we, we've got to spend money to make money. And uh, that's an old thing that everybody says, if you want to make money, you've got to spend money. But we do need this system. Yeah, the charge master will, to, to redo that's $10,000, and uh, you can expect 25% more revenue after that's brought up to date. Um, it just, and that's what it is. Is it just accelerating the payment? It's not software. It's not software. The charge master is kind of the entire computer system. We put charges in, you add a CPT code or a modifier to them, they drop, that's how your bill gets formed and it exports to the various payers, Medicare, Blue Cross. If those charges are not entered correctly in the system, then it's not going to have the correct modifier or the CPT code and it's going to drop wrong and you're not going to get paid correctly. And our Part of the charge master review is also she will compare our prices and update them because we haven't had a charge master review in eight over years. eight years and prices change. I mean, everything goes up every year, so there's things that we might not be getting paid <coughs> adequately on. So that's where we come up with the 25%. You know, it'll look at all of our charges compare those to surrounding areas and what it actually costs. And so that'll get fixed and then how stuff drops in the system will get fixed so we'll get paid faster. And if, it, if you send a claim to Medicare, 
it takes them 30, 45 days to get back to you, whether or not that's denied. If it denies in the 30 to 45 days, then you have to fix it and resend it. So then you're starting the whole process early. <coughs> So you should get paid faster if yeah. by doing it correctly the first time. Mm -hmm. So you're spending less time on that one claim because mm -hmm. you're doing it once instead of doing it three times. What kind of time frame is that? Mm -hmm. If you did it once and submitted it, how quick is the reimbursement? Most insurance companies should pay you within 30 to 45 days. Okay. If you look at the um, the AR graph, there's an AR days column on there, mm -hmm. and some of them are not that. Obviously, private pay is not. Um, October, like Blue Cross, AR days is 38 days. They generally take about 38 days to pay us. Medicaid is 96. A lot of that is you know, hand care and they're special. Uh, Medicare is typically 35 days. Some of our commercial insurances don't pay timely either, and that's 103 days. Ideally, those AR days should be about 45. But if you send it out and it takes them 50 days to send it back to you and it gets denied, then you fix it and you get another 50 days, so you're already out of 100 days. And What's your total accounts receivable right now? <laughs> what I'm hoping for with the visit from GPHA is they work with small rural hospitals. I don't know if they do large ones, but I, was, we know they, I know they do small rural hospitals. Maybe they can give us a hint of what we can do to generate more revenue. I mean, how can we provide more services that will, I mean, obviously, you don't go to the hospital for things we did 30 years ago. I told my kids the other day, I literally spent a night in the hospital when I had an ingrown toenail done when I was in elementary school. Well, you know, you don't do that anymore. So it's hard to get patients in the beds. So what can we do as a service to generate more income and, and be a service to the county? That's what I'm hoping for them too. This is Great Plains Health Alliance. Alliance. We get our computer system from them. Angie Martin works for them and she's the in and out and helping. Um, they help us with our charge master. Whenever we need an account set up, that's who does it. And they're affiliated with NHS, which is Midwest, Midwest Health Systems, and that's another part of our computer system and um, IT. If, if the entire industry is in the for as you guys, you know, if you watch the evening news, uh, <laughs> it's pretty impressive. <clears throat> But I, I don't think it's a hopeless situation for small hospitals. I think it's just going to change our way of thinking. And, uh, and I've joined in two years, <laughs> you know, since we had a lot of work to do. And, and how much is this, again, this piece that you're wanting? In charge master with you? Yeah. It's $10,000. Okay, this is kind of off the subject, but, you know, I've been saying for a long time, I think the EMS needs a night. Can, can the EMS department piggyback on that? No. Okay. It's a different. thought I'd try. <laughs> 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 Speaking of you, Misty. I appreciate that, Lisa. Well, you brought that up you several times. You understand that back and forth. I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 We've looked at that in the beginning before we even signed the contract. Okay. All right. Back to business. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> well, I guess the thing about the advanced payment, we're going to have to check with, with Joe and Lisa and the auditor, and we can't give you an answer right, right. now. We understand that. And, and, and it's truly, I don't want to, you know, I 
we're going to take a meeting and come over here and, and we've asked for this. Um, but we certainly expect that as we go into the new year, that we will pay that back. I, I would like to pay it back in increments if we could, but so that we're not, you know, as Mr. Shepard said, you know, bothering you at all. The preferred way of paying us was. 121250 quarterly. I mean, if there was any way to do the 100000 divided out by four, what's that? On this preferred tax distribution check, you have preferred, you want to pay us 121250 quarterly. Well, if we get an advance, can we quarterly take that off of this? Just throw in the number of hundred divided by four, we get five thousand. Decrease each of these payments by twenty five thousand. I mean, so we're not getting any more. We're just getting it up front, and then we're taking it out of the payments. So reducing the next payment. Yeah. So Todd, what happens if we can't? And you have to wait till February. Well, that's February's long ways. I, I don't know for certain, but I, I would think we would be back where we were two years, two years ago, probably not that much. But um, it would be a whole we'd have a hard time doing that. Uh, December 20th, after we get money in. I decided that January 1st. Is that too long? I don't know. I just don't know. We're told that the longer we wait, the more it's going to be. And we don't want to get to that point where we have to do no fun warrants or anything like that. That's why we're doing it now instead of waiting until then. And we've been current until the week before I called you guys. I mean, that just is, shows how quick it can can happen, you know, it gets, you know, it just doesn't take very long. So I guess, I guess, I think we'll just have to check with the auditors and see if we get back to you next yeah, week. Yeah, I can, I can go back to you. This is new territory yeah. for me, and so I've been a researcher too. I mean, this is a very simple analogy, but I have a line of credit on a farm. I mean, you guys are with agribusiness probably all know this too. Sometimes the fertilizer bill comes due before the wheat harvest comes in. Well, I get my line of credit, and hopefully. ASAP pay it back as soon as harvest is over, which I'm comparing this to. I mean, obviously there's uh, receivables out there. You just got to get them in. Oversimplification, but that's... Well, and, and that's the other thing is, is as Angie has been helping Julie, helping McKenzie, is at 87,000 <coughs> that went that night, they stayed late. And, yeah, so it's not like we are not, there's no patience, there's nothing coming. It, it's a bump in the road. That, we have money out there coming in. Yeah. We just don't know when or exactly how much. So our swing bed, I mean, they pay per diem. I mean, our total charges that were out there for swing bed were 30, and it shows an expected payment like 100, but some of that's a write off and some of it's contractual adjustments. We never really know the exact dollar amount that you're getting from them. They might pay you a quarter of that and the rest of it's a write off. I was recently in the hospital, the bill was 36000 insurance paid 9000 and the remainder of that was a write off. So, I mean, you just kind of have to keep that other amount. It'd be a lot simpler to believe if it was private money instead of okay. True. <laughs> but I was just, you know, for comparison purposes. Before I forget, if you guys are still doing the rotational thing to come to our meetings, our next one will be on Tuesday, 
December 17th because there was conflicts with school events on Monday night. So it'll be Tuesday the 17th. taxes only to meet that budget. There's no overage. There's no surplus. And if expenses exceed the project the budget, guess what? The county doesn't write checks. I mean, in other words, if, if you know if we run out of money, uh, we we have the remedy of going for no fund warrants or not paying our bills. That's it. We can't go to a bank and borrow money. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, so, do I have any to talk to other treasures? Not really. Uh, I mean, I, you know, Amber, our auditor, could probably you know, tell us what we, we have unencumbered in yeah. this moment. We'll call him. She's gone this week. The only thing that I can think of in my head is if we stay on the tax distribution system to do an early distribution besides January 20th, that we stay with the way we've been doing it in the past, which we always pay a little over. We're not doing that. But, you know, that's the only thing I can think of that I can do as a treasurer. Well, you're, you're not, you're not going to see money coming in until December. No. You know, a lot of people actually wait to like the very last day. But then my next my next concern is I've lost an employee. I'm behind. I'm not gonna have daily work caught up on January first to live on a distribution like that. So how am I gonna give my that's how you make it big first you know we're trying to do year again. It's hectic this time of year. Very I mean is. I can't just December thirty first year ends and come in January first yeah. to write it. That's why I was asking what they thought of January 1st. I mean, even they thought that was too late. Yeah, when you said that, I thought, wow, if that's anything, 
and I'll see how that's going to work. <laughs> As far as non-vegetative funds, dipping into non-vegetative funds, I don't know what is allowed on that. What is Can a hospital set up something with a private person over there to pay for that? Well, if this person wants to make a gift to the hospital, that's one thing. But in terms of borrowing, no. Can they have to to the bank get a line of credit? They can't do that. They can't do that. It would just have to be a gift to them, right? Yeah. That that's the whole, like for ten thousand dollars, I would think they could come up with that. Yeah, but I, I mean, I asked specifically when I met with them how far behind were they last Friday, and it was maybe eighty or ninety thousand. Yeah, that's why they asked. And and that wasn't considering their charge master to the charge for that. Because that company was going to work with them over the time. To yes. Yes. But then apparently they got. They got a lot. Of, I mean, they he's got right. They had to check in. You go a couple of weeks or a couple of pay periods, and I mean, they would add up pretty quick. Absolutely. Thirty-seven employees. I know there's some of the employees they haven't paid. Yeah. So I don't. So. Thing is, we'll check with Amber. Yeah, we'll call Amber yeah. and see what she thinks. I think you call some of your, thinks. you're going to be calling some of your fellow treasurers anyway. That's right, I am. I almost forgot already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people forget. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Some people forget meetings. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Sometimes. What do you have, Kurt? If, if we do, as for our discussion last night, if we go ahead and pay the tipping fee, do we need to have, a, as a county, a contract with the haulers? So we're just at their mercy to pay us? Well, reimburse us? I would, Reno County, as I read through that agreement, Reno County promises to give us an accounting. It's in there in black and white. So in theory, we can ask Reno County, hey, shoot us copies of uh, all, all the uh, uh, people from Stafford County who dumped there, you know, but you don't think we need to have a contract with the haulers to, re to reimburse us? I don't have a contract with the haulers. Well, it, it would be a bill if they, I mean, if they're going to accept waste from Stafford County and haul it to Reno County, they're going to bill from us. That's just they, a, for example, if they haul Spartan County, they still have to pay the tipping. You know, uh, that's out of their pocket. <laughs> that's their pocket, <laughs> not ours. For wh whatever weird reason, I wasn't there when the Reno County. Contract was negotiated. Reno County apparently I just, I, I don't wants know. us to pay, not the not well. Money. There's, there's well, no. I think it's so they can guarantee. The yeah, there's no yeah. negotiation on the tipping fee. No, they just, no. they just pre, they determine. All right, this year it's thirty-one dollars. Well, actually, the tipping fee is fifteen fifty for this year. The remaining money comes from administrative fees. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. That well, I mean, as far as the one lady said, well, can you go and negotiate with yeah, it? There's, there's no negotiation. When you got the only county store in town. Well, that's what, that's what I no, said. I don't want to do away with the contract or amend the contract that we have with Reno County in case we have to go to Plan B. Right. What, what if one of those trash haulers, we paid the bill and they, and they filed for bankruptcy, we're just stuck with the bill? Yeah, we're, we're SOL. Or an unsecured credit. That's why I thought maybe a contract would give so us some leverage with it. Not, not really. Put us right. in line for it. Not if they file bankruptcy. You wouldn't be in line for it to get your money. Okay. They take 30 tons in. And, 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 and what we, what we can what we can do is in lieu of, in lieu of a contract oh, so they can, so we don't get yeah. some haulers and well, I didn't know I owed the county yeah. is, is just by, you know, publish a resolution in the paper saying, hey, folks, if you're, if you're hauling trash to the Reno County landfill, uh, it's on the county's tab. Well, that and would be any we reserve the right to, to recoup that amount. I, I, I think we ought to do that. Any way. citizen hauling, too. Mm -hmm. If any specific individual hall from Stafford well, County. Well, we have to check with Cindy, but I'm sure she builds individuals at home in there now. We the used to. We used to. Well, that's to our CND. No, no. You, you, would, you, would, you would pay 
you pay a commercial company to haul. No, like if you hauled a load over there right. personally, and they wrote your name on that ticket, you would get a bill for it. I know, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I don't like about the arrangement we have. Why would you tax and oh, I charge I agree. an individual I agree. and then charge them on top of that? Exactly. And you don't to a commercial hauler. That's the <laughs> <laughs> That's what I don't understand about this whole arrangement. Always As I pointed out last night, in some parts of the state, you're, 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 you're contracting with the owners of the trash pit for access. Yeah. Access only. And it basically means if you show up with Stafford County plates on your vehicle, they'll, they'll let you pass checkpoint at Charlie. Ours is a little different because they're basically, you know, seeing how many tons of SF. You know, yeah. trash comes in and sent in the county of Stafford yeah. Bill. In other words, it's like somebody's you got an open tab at your place and people can go and buy. Uh, we don't get hung. Uh, for, for next week, I'll, I'll get you a very simple you know, resolution of publishing the paper saying, hey, I think that'd be good. You know, that way somebody can't. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'd be good. I mean, obviously, the guys at the meeting last night. You know, all new that you know. Oh yeah. But in case you get one of these new trash haulers, Boyle was telling me about somebody from New Jersey who tried to set up a trash hauling thing down in South Central Kansas, and mm -hmm. basically collecting money from people and or towns and just dumping trash here, there, everywhere. Oh my. Well, hey, you make a bigger profit if you have to pay that yeah. tipping fee. <laughs> Because anybody could come in and start hauling trash to Reno County. I mean, we don't know whether they can pay their bills or not. Okay. Um, I'd like to call another executive session, please. Come on. Do you need five minutes? Do you need me? Yeah, I'm, okay. I think I do. Okay. okay. Make a motion for a quick executive <laughs> session of five minutes. Second. We're not like the first time. Then we have a second we'll go to the executive session for discussion along of non elected personnel for five minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. Jane? No, no, no. Kurt? No. Okay, where are Jaren?